During the iPhone launch event in 2007, Steve Jobs quoted Alan Kay, saying that people who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. And this has certainly served Apple very well. But more than a decade later, Tesla recognized that if it wanted to get ahead in software and artificial intelligence, they would need to break away from relying on third-party processor chips and build their own, so that they would have control over optimizing it to solve their own specific tasks, and to be able to scale it up much faster, achieving higher levels of performance at a quicker pace. When Elon Musk gets an idea like this, he prefers to tackle it on a grand scale, ensuring that it's a worthwhile endeavor for Tesla to devote its limited resources to a project that holds long-term benefits for the company. And so Elon has gone forth to do exactly this, involving the teams not only at Tesla, but with input from SpaceX as well, to build a high-powered AI training computer called Dojo that intends to enable Tesla to make leapfrog breakthroughs in the field of AI, focusing on real-world vision and navigation that will be used by the company's current and future products. And now, two years after it was first announced, the hardware chip is finally ready for prime time. And before we continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and a brand new set of quarterly financial data going back up to 15 years on over 9,000 stocks, and it's all freely available. At the recent Viva Tech conference in Paris, Elon Musk reiterated to the audience that he thinks self-driving cars will soon be solved and that the value of Tesla is primarily driven on this basis of autonomy. At first glance, this is a strange way of putting it, since Tesla has had a recent run-up from nearly $100 per share all the way up to the $250 level, with most of the gain occurring over the past month. And so Elon's comments seem to be targeted at trying to explain the recent run-up saying that Tesla's stock has been driven on the basis of autonomy. Now this is possible, but arguably, nothing has really changed in the past month with regards to analysts' view on full self-driving. It's possible that because Tesla has been adding competitors to its supercharger network, and Elon Musk has hinted that Tesla could license out other products as well, including full self-driving, that there's a greater likelihood of this now happening. However, there's no FSD licensing deals yet that we know of, especially with Ford and General Motors, who have been added to the supercharger network, but have their own self-driving projects in the works. On top of that, most analysts are still quite skeptical of Tesla's full self-driving software, as it needs to be significantly better than a human before a robotaxi business makes sense, and they have failed to envision Tesla's rate of improvement. Furthermore, Tesla's valuation even near the $250 range, where the company's market cap is around $830 billion, can be justified on EV sales alone, according to Gary Black. Tesla has had a much higher valuation in the past, and one of the main reasons that the stock has gotten hit over the past year is due to declining margins, as Elon Musk aggressively reduces vehicle prices during this rising interest rate environment. Investors are always looking 6 to 12 months ahead, and so as signals of reduced inflation start to appear, it's possible that the trend reverses itself, at least slightly, putting investors' worst fears at bay. Elon Musk has even said it's more expensive to purchase a Tesla with higher rates, and he's countering this by lowering prices. This goes to say that lower rates would mean higher prices, and Tesla's margins could improve back to previous higher levels, not to mention all of the continued work Tesla has done to remove costs from the vehicles. And so the market may be anticipating that the worst is over by sending the stock much higher on the basis of EV sales and margins. Given that Tesla is aiming for a 50% growth rate in vehicles, which currently makes up almost the entire business's revenue, along with energy, which is growing even faster than cars, then Tesla can easily grow into its now increased price to earnings ratio on the basis of its current product lineup. As a matter of fact, self-driving robotaxis don't seem to be accounted for at all within the company's valuation, especially since forward-looking investment firms like ARK Invest anticipate that a successful robotaxi launch could generate hundreds of billions of dollars in high-margin revenue down the road, which Tesla's market cap doesn't seem to reflect. The only portion of autonomy baked into Tesla's market cap arises from their current sales of FSD, which are included in the price of the vehicle. 
But this isn't related to Tesla network robotaxi revenue, such as charging per ride like Uber does today. It's fairly obvious that if robotaxis come to fruition and take off, Tesla's market cap should increase dramatically, especially if it's the only player with such a massive fleet that can now collect a cut of the payment for each robotaxi ride, from potentially a fleet of millions of Teslas already on the road today. So Elon Musk's statement may be linking the future of Tesla's robotaxi business to Tesla's future market cap, which is how he sees the path for Tesla to reaching a market cap higher than Apple and Saudi Aramco combined, something that he said in the past. Now Elon Musk has called for full self-driving to be solved in the near future multiple times before, but it hasn't panned out. Always taking much longer than expected and having to overcome local maxima where it seems like progress is being made only to be leveled off prematurely, never fully achieving the desired goal. However, there is a critical piece of data that suggests this time may indeed be different. Tesla's Twitter account for Tesla AI has announced that the company is building the foundation not just for robotaxis, but also for robots. Tesla's occupancy network, for instance, which maps the 3D layout of the occupied space around its surroundings, is transferable between cars and robots for navigation, whether on wheels or on legs. Tesla also showcased its work on creating virtual worlds and various predictions of possible outcomes. One of the interesting things that Elon Musk highlighted was the ability to give a prompt to the neural net and have it take a different action such as switching lanes. This seems to be in line with Tesla's goal to have the neural networks control the end-to-end -end flow, collecting multimodal data from multiple sensors all the way from planning to control of the vehicle itself. Being able to tell the neural network something, like take a left turn, is a perfect use case for a human robotaxi passenger to give on-the-fly directions or commands to the car and having it act appropriately. So it seems like Tesla continues to close the feature gap on getting robotaxis to become a commercially viable product. But Tesla has one major trick up its sleeve that could significantly advance FSD, reducing interventions, and surprising investors who are looking in the rear view mirror. Every human intervention while using full self-driving is an instance where the vehicle would have done something incorrect on its own. The critical interventions are the most important, where the human driver needs to step in to avoid a collision or some other critical event. This is different than a non-critical intervention, such as taking a wrong turn, or doing something that is still safe, but just different than what the human would have wanted. Robotaxis will only make sense if the number of critical interventions is virtually zero, while reducing non-critical ones will continue to improve the user experience, but isn't really a requirement to see robotaxis in action. While recent iterations of the FSD software have improved on critical issues, it could still take time to achieve 99.9999% reliability. Say a Tesla has one of these critical events one out of every hundred times. Typically, it's measured on miles or millions of miles per accident. But to simplify things, assume that out of a hundred events where the vehicle software needs to make a decision, one of those events is a critical event where the human needs to step in. Of course, in a robotaxi, there's no human. So this would give 99% reliability, which is actually quite poor, especially if your car got into an accident, say one out of every hundred intersections that it crossed. And so to reduce this to one out of every thousand or one out of every 10,000 events, that's equivalent to adding an extra nine of reliability, 99.9%, 99.99%, and so forth. Humans are at roughly six nines of reliability, 99.9998%. Now Tesla hasn't told us exactly where they are today, or really their progress in making improvements. While FSD beta testers have seemingly started to see more rides with zero interventions, there's still a long way to go if the entire fleet is measured. And so one of the methods of improving reliability is obviously to make the neural networks much stronger, such that they know how to act in a wider variety of scenarios and to avoid mistakes they may make in seemingly obvious or complex situations. Research has shown that neural networks appear to get better, more accurate, and more powerful the larger they are and by providing them more clean data for training. The real world, of course, is full of infinite possibilities. However, the neural nets can get surprisingly good at detecting patterns. And on top of that, they can make split-second decisions, have better reaction time than humans, and can monitor a 360-degree view of the car's surroundings all at once, 
multiple times per second. And so Tesla's fleet is growing exponentially as they deliver more and more vehicles each year. Even if these customers are not paying for full self-driving, Tesla can still collect data from these cars, including the interventions and differences between the software running in the background and what the human driver does, which is quite valuable for learning. As highlighted by Daniel McGuire of ARK Invest, Tesla has made a few FSD software updates, which has propelled the number of FSD miles into a rapid exponential growth curve. With regards to Waymo and Cruise, they're basically flat compared to Tesla, and they don't have any way currently of scaling to a massive fleet since there is no massive fleet of cars with all of the necessary sensors besides Tesla's. Elon Musk has said this graph will look like a wall, especially since combined with more cars on the road, FSD is getting better, meaning more people want to use it, and those people want to use it for longer periods of time. So there's no shortage of data that Tesla can collect from all over the world, and they continue to train the network on all of these strange scenarios, making the car smarter and smarter. The real windfall then comes from Tesla's insane dojo training computer, which permits this huge inflow of data to be crunched much faster than it has been in the past. This will allow Tesla to make adjustments, test them out, and iterate faster on larger quantities of data. In the middle of last year, Tesla had the seventh largest computer in the world, containing over 7,000 NVIDIA GPUs in a single one of their three data centers. Now this is a massive computer and has gotten Tesla to where it is today. However, Elon Musk has confirmed that Tesla's long shot dojo project will now be entering production. Elon has said that it's been online and running useful tasks for a few months, but it appears that Tesla may be ready to start scaling Dojo and building Exapods, which are server racks filled with Dojo chips, for prime time use. By the beginning of next year, Tesla aims to have Dojo surpass the top 5 supercomputers in the world combined, assuming that they would be advancing as well. And by October of 2024, which is just over a year from now, Tesla's Dojo will be an astounding 40 times more powerful compared to where it is today equivalent to over 300,000 NVIDIA GPUs. This game-changing move that has been in the works for years makes Tesla's past progress from whenever they started until now look like a flat line. This could mean that a task that typically takes two days to complete will just take over an hour. And so the quality of full self-driving will improve exponentially, which is what's needed, but in a short period of time, quickly adding one or two more nines of reliability. That's 10 to 100 times better just from hardware alone. To get that kind of increase in a year's time, it's fairly unheard of at this scale. So some people may look at FSD and say it's already fairly good today. However, all of these exponential curves are in a sense converging next year. The number of vehicles on the road with FSD is increasing with miles driven looking like a vertical wall. Tesla is making rapid advancements that they highlighted in the field of AI to solve problems more accurately and efficiently, and the amount of compute Tesla is adding will be 100 exaflops per second, about 40 times faster than today's data center, and seemingly above the 10x gain that Elon Musk spoke of during AI Day 2. This may also coincide with the launch of a dedicated robotaxi vehicle, which Elon has been anticipating in 2024. During an interview with CNBC's David Faber, Elon Musk actually says that Tesla will have its chat GPT moment either this year or next year in 2024, alluding to the rapid adoption of the technology, perhaps within weeks, which is possible since Tesla's fleet is already driving on the road today, just waiting for the software to be ready. This could instantly crush companies like Uber and Lyft and also make third-party automated driving projects immediately antiquated and useless. Interestingly, if Tesla is late on this time frame, they'll have more cars on the road, which technically makes the network more powerful. Over this year and next year, they're targeting to more than double the size of their entire existing fleet. In terms of Dojo, the exact rate of growth is hard to predict, but the trend calls for significantly more compute being added along with further improvements to the neural network algorithms. The growth rate that Tesla has outlined for Dojo will be the key to unlocking full self-driving much sooner than people think, as Elon Musk may actually be right this time round. So do you think Tesla can indeed achieve the Dojo compute power that they're shooting for? And do you actually see full self-driving as a possibility by the end of next year? 
Don't forget to watch my last video on Cybertruck dethroning the Ford F-150. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.